I'm Mark Pitchers. Way to wear it. Tea drinking, caffeine intolerance, beard trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But in this series, the target is out of my control. Three challenges will be put forward on Fox's Facebook page. Then it's up to you to have the final say on what mission I take on. I've faced some incredibly tough challenges so far. Have you been drinking de-icer again? Some of which I've smashed out the park. This one for the win. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. I literally have no words. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This carp freak is not giving up without a fight. Yes! This is the challenge. What's up Carp Freaks and welcome to episode 22 of the challenge. Now this challenge was set by Harry and the challenge is you must give your daughters £45 to spend on fishing tackle. Whatever they buy you have to use to catch a carp. You only pass when each item has helped catch a carp. So when I found out about this challenge a few weeks ago, I headed off down my local tackle shop with my girls and this is what happened. So myself and my two daughters, Isabella and Francesca, are now in Wickersley Anglin in Rotherham and my girls have been given a budget to get whatever fishing tackle you want and I have to catch a carp on that. So I've strapped a GoPro to Isabella's head, Francesca's holding her GoPro, then I'm going to let them loose and go wild, get whatever you want, and uh, yeah, have fun. Okay? okay yeah. Right, off you go. Okay, so the first thing I've had my eye on this whole entire time is one of these boy beads. Just put them in the basket. I think that we need to get some of this. Um, no. These are all so expensive. Okay. Those look so cool. Let's have a look. Wait, we've missed an aisle. Hang on. These these fake fish. What are these? What are these called? Boilies? I think they're called boilies. So, um, I mean, we've already got some boilies in our basket. They look totally different to these because these are like... I'm just going to get these just because, you know, I don't know what the other ones are. Whoa, what's this? I've just found these and they look quite cool. They're like rainbow. They're quite cheap, so I'm just going to get them just... I don't know what that does. What are rig rings? I don't know what they are. I have no clue. I don't know. I don't know if you'd put food in it. Yes, um, somebody just please tell us. We yeah. don't know. I'll tell you what we're missing, Isabella. What? Floaty. <laughs> floaty, what's a floaty? I don't know what a floaty is. What are these? Oh, these are um, the brand that Daddy works for, so maybe we should get those because they must be very good. I find this adorable and I don't what know why. Oh! I think we might need these. Should we do them instead of these? I think we might need both. Are I you think sure? that yeah, because where else would you clip? I mean, I where else I... would you clip these on? I think we should get these. This is scary. You never know what's lurking around in here. I don't know what else we need. What does this do? Uh, I don't know where it works, and I I don't know where it goes. Let's just get it. We might need these. What are they? I don't know, but we might need them. So, we're just going to get these because um, I'm pretty sure I've seen these before. I'm pretty sure that um, Daddy has some of these, but you can only use what we buy, so. Oh, we need these. 
Um, There's seven pounds, Isabella. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah. Never seen these before though. I can't tell if they're actually fish, I think Let's they're not. Let's get those. Sure? So we're gonna get these because... Yeah. I like this. Okay, okay. Get, we're yeah. not gonna get those, sorry, I lied. We're gonna get this ladybird and it's... Francesca really likes it, it's really, really cute. Do you know what? I think we're done. Wait, what do these do? Um, we're gonna get these ones instead because... We lied yet again. Wait, where do these go? Four pounds for three. Here's one of the launchers if you want to Let, Let's just get a launcher. We've just got this launcher and I think that you put yeah, you boi do. boilies in it and then you throw them onto no, the No, you don't put boilies in it, you put food in it. So boilies? No. What's boilies do then? Daddy, you need to pay. So I have here a blue carrier bag, which looks a lot like a dog bag. And for all I know, that's exactly what could be in here. But since I went out with my girls, I have not looked inside this carrier bag. So I have genuinely no idea what my girls have bought. So this is gonna be interesting, I think. Okay, let's have a look. Do I do it as a lucky dip? <laughs> okay, right, okay, so the, the, the first thing my girls have got is some uh, rubber shad things. <laughs> okay. What, what are you going to do with this? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Just jig them across the bottom. <laughs> okay. That's a good start. Brilliant. Okay, the next thing they got. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. They've got me some scissors. Okay. So yeah, that's good. Thanks, girls. Okay, yeah. A pack of rubber sinking corn. That's pretty useful, yeah. Okay, some... Uh, I can see why they would have bought them. Some, yeah, some artificial boyans, boilies. Yeah, I think anything pink I think they would have gone for. It wouldn't surprise me if there was more pink things in here. Okay, so the girls have been with me through the past two and a half years where I've been developing my own range of pop-ups with CC Moore. So they bought me some Nash Strawberry Crush pop-ups. <laughs> they look a lot like your carp freaks okay. in colour. And mine probably might have been in the... Oh, mine wouldn't Yours have been, wouldn't in, have been in the shop. No, shops. they wouldn't have been in the shop, would they? But the pink... Yeah, I thought they'd have picked something else pink. <laughs> okay. Thanks, girls. They're very much a pink theme. I knew they would be. So, some, yeah, some uh, cord uh, pop-up dumbbells in pink. Do we have anything else pink? So I've got a pack of size four treble hooks. <laughs> Marvellous though, that's good. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah. I know what that is, yeah. A catapult. Yeah, good thinking girls. Oh. Some ready tied chods. That's useful, yep. Yeah. A lead, just the right size as well. Four ounce lead in line. Perfect. Good choice. Got one more thing. <laughs> Some size eight. What are they? Medium curves. Fox, though. So that's. <laughs> I would love to have known what was going through there their little minds when they were picking all these things for me. I, I, I'm sure they were doing it to try and help me. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, that's... What can I say? This, this is going to be challenging. I don't know how I'm going to do this. 
But I think the best place to start really is to have a walk around, try and find some carp, and then from there, base some sort of plan. So let's go for a lap of the lake and try and find a fish or two. I'm gonna use my first item of tackle. Yeah? Yeah. Scissors. Um, let me find some scissors to open this pack of scissors. <laughs> Go. Okay, right then. <laughs> We're up and running. Okay, that's one bit of tackle used. Yeah, but you haven't caught a calf on it yet. Yeah, but I've, yeah, okay, give me a chance. Proper going for it now. Look at that. I've had to use it three times now, so. Do you want me just to like put a blur over the tattoo? <sighs> Should have been a knobhead. You're in no position to talk. You would absolutely. I actually am. You're I not. You've got to smudge the size of a, of a of a smaller than a penny on your arm, which you fainted when you had done. You're in no position. I am though. You're really not. I really am. Uh uh. Not at all. Did I give you shit over your tattoo? Yeah. No, I never. Never said a word. <laughs> 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 So, for this challenge, I picked a venue with a good stock of fish because up until today, I had no idea what was in this carrier bag. So I have come to Woodland Waters near Grantham and I'm on the, the Carp Lake. I have fished here once before, actually. We did a, an all bases covered here in February. It was Baltic and I managed to catch one then. So hopefully, I can catch more than one this time round. What I'm doing now though, um, there was a few fish cruising around the island in front of me. So I've just tied up some mesh PVA bags of floating trout pellet, and I'm gonna use the catapult to catapult them out there. Ordinarily, I'd probably use a, a, a spot or a spawn or a throwing stick, but this time I'm using the catapult because I have to use the catapult really and hopefully we can get a few fish taking floaters and from there I'll be able to formulate some sort of plan on what I do next. I don't think so. Right. Oh, that's good. It's broken already. <laughs> oh, <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> How, you literally... I literally haven't used it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> Have we got spare lackeys? That's not. And you can just push it back on. If it you've comes off on its own, what's no, it? What? You've got to use it to catch a fish. How has it done that? I've not even used it. You know, if this breaks, it's just it, people are going to think we're just doing this to try and make other people's gear look shit. Is this going to stay on? That's never going to stay on. It's going to work my hand, isn't it? Oh, it did stay on. That's good. There we go, that's in the drift, isn't it? That wind just changed. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Literally just gone, nah. Like that, isn't it? You're kidding me. So I've been introducing a few PVA bags of floating trout pellets and there's a few fish starting to show interest. They're certainly not going crazy, but I'm gonna set up a floater rod just in case it all kicks off. And the next bit of kit that I'm using from the, uh, the blue bag 
is the artificial buoyant boilies. And I've got one of the, the white boilies and I've trimmed it, <laughs> I've trimmed it right down. It's basically just a slither of white rubber. And I'm gonna use that as a, a sight topper, if you like, on top of my floating hook bait. So I'm gonna fish with a pellet hook bait, floating pellet hook bait, and top it off with a, a sliver of the uh, white artificial boilie. So I'm just trimming that down now. Well, it's really not happening here at all. A few fish started taking, but, but not enough really. And then the swans came along and sort of wrecked the job and the fish didn't really, didn't really get back on it. So I need, to, I need to do something. The day is wearing on already. I've wasted so much time faffing around and I need to go and find some fish somewhere. So I'm on the move and let's go and see what we can see. I think I already sound like I'm beaten, don't I? You do a bit. Do you feel like you're beaten? No, I don't. That's the thing. I feel like there's more pressure on me on this one than any other. What, because of you girls? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. It'll be right, it'll be right. We'll find fish. So I'm now at the other end of the lake and just as I was driving down here I could already see there's a lot more fish down here than there was up there. Yeah. Yeah, this is looking a lot better. Right, I feel like now we can actually get started. There's quite a lot of fish cruising around on the surface. Yeah, there's quite a good number of fish, so... Right, I'm just gonna do exactly the same as what I was doing over there, catapulting out PVA bags of floating trout pellets. And hopefully I'll get a better response here than I did back over there. with that because you're in. Not bad. What's the, <laughs> what's the moral of the story there? Uh, don't rush, take your time, don't panic. Something like that I'm going to go with. What's your moral of the story? Always have a landing net with an easy reach. Actually, no, the moral of the story is, if you see fish t feeding, take the opportunity while it's there, is the moral of the story. See, now I'm thinking about my second bite. I'm looking at them fish pac and out in front of me, and I'm thinking, get in the net so I can get a rubber fish on and somehow catch them <laughs> fish. <laughs> while the pac went in like that, they'll take anything. <laughs> Well, it has been really tough going today. I mean, we've got, it's flat calm now, 27 degrees. The fish just haven't been playing ball at all. And what has made it really hard is, is the breeze. When I got the fish feeding down here on the surface, the breeze was kind of coming in on the inside line here. And it was really affecting the presentation. I was getting a big bow in the line and it was pulling the float to one side, making the, making the hook bait behave really unnaturally and it just wasn't working. And now the wind has just dropped off. And since it has, fish have been feeding in the same place, whereas before the, the floaters were kind of racing through the swim as well. Now the floaters are kind of staying put, the fish are feeding a bit more confidently and have been able to get better presentation as well. I think that was the first cast where I've actually been able to get good presentation and I got a bite and the fish are still pack-manning out there. I just want to see this fish go in the net. Because I think chances are going to be few and far between. I really do. I know there's a, there's a lot of carp in this lake, but 
it's going to be hard work this session, it really is. I don't know if I'm playing this a lot more gently than normal or this one's just biting like a maniac. It's really pulling. Its head and its tail look quite a way away from each other. Its head and its tail look a long way from each other? Yeah. Its head and its tail look a long way from each other? Yeah, as in like it looks quite long. Oh. <laughs> I'm thinking, what do you mean its head and its tail like it's got an abnormally large distance between its head and its tail? You mean its body isn't in proportion? No, no. I don't mean that. I mean that it's a long fish. Oh. Well, that's what most normal people would say. It's a long fish, not its head and its tail <laughs> don't look... Look... What did you say? Its head and its tail... Look a long way from each other. Who says that? That's like saying to a tall person, your head is a lot higher off the ground than most other people's. Whereas I'd say, you're tall. <laughs> Your head is much further off the ground than mine is. <laughs> He's shy now because you said his head's not in proportion to his tail. Come on fish, I don't care how far your head is away from your tail, just get in the net. I want to see that one's head much closer to my landing net. That's what I want to see. Oh, I've got a branch. Branch is ruining it. Get in. Yes! Oh. There's nothing. His head and tail are perfectly in proportion to each other. <laughs> He's a nice fish. That's a start then. That took, that took so much longer than I thought it was going to. It's now, it's late afternoon. We got here sort of mid morning. It's taken ages to get that first bite. I was hoping to get a really quick fish, set on my nerves, get into the challenge, get everything up and running nice and early. I feel like I'm a little bit behind where I'd like to be, but right now this fish feeding really confidently. So I want to have a look at this fish right now, get back out there and maximise my chances. Well, he really wanted that hook bait. The hook was right that far back in the throat. And that was the hook bait that did it. It's just a, uh, a floating trout pallet. And it was topped off with one of the white artificial bodies that I trimmed down to make some sort of sight bob. So, this challenge is now finally up and running. And we've got a really nice common of around, probably about 16 pounds, something like that. But perhaps more importantly, that's three items I can tick off the list now. That's the catapult, the scissors, and the mixed pack of artificial boilies. And I'm quite eager to get this fish back and get another item ticked off because I can see the fish feeding behind Harry. Um, if I'm honest, I probably will continue to use two of the items, the catapult and of course the scissors. Right, let's slip him back. Well, I think all them floaters are gone out there now, so I need to catapult some more out, get them feeding again. I think if I can get one more fish before nightfall, then I think that'll put me on track for a pass. If I can keep that sort of momentum going, two or three fish a day, yeah, that's all I need. Easy. I wanted to try and tick like another couple off really, but I, I, I don't think I can. I can use the sinking corn tonight, pop-ups tonight, chod rigs tonight. It's gonna have to be one of them, really. So I'm just gonna do the same again. I've got a pop-up dumbbell, pink pop-up dumbbell. So I'm just going to do exactly the same, trim it down to a little sliver, use it as a sight bob, which I'll pay very close attention to when fishing on the surface.
process tying a new hook link. <laughs> well, I was just in the process of tying a new hook link. I've had so many fish come up to the hook bite, shy away at the last minute, or actually take the hook bite and get away with it. So I thought I need to make some sort of change and uh, didn't need to, just took a bit of patience, that was all. And we are playing, hopefully will be the second fish. This time, here he comes, here he comes. Yes, that's it, a second one in the bag. That's great. Wow. That's a nice fish. That's a big one. Yeah. Can I take a picture of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. <laughs> I'm glad you saw one. Yeah. yeah. I think he might take up a bit of uh, a bit of fishing, yeah. Robert, with a rod and line. Oh yes, I think uh, from today I'm going to change my mind and yeah. I'll try to get myself to fishing. Good man. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Well, the pellet hook bait might have come off, but I'm still left with the all important pink dumbbell. <laughs> Which you were watching all of the time. Yes, yes. Never took my eyes off it once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, fish number two, and we've got a really gnarly old common of around probably about 16 pound, maybe 17 pound. And more importantly, that's now four items ticked off the list. I can't remember how many items were on the list, but there's four less I now need to catch on. And there are still fish feeding out there. So what I need to do now is fathom out how I'm gonna fashion some sort of hook bait out of what else is left. And if I can go three fish into, this, into the session tonight, that will put me in great stead. It really will. So just a few minutes ago, the fish were going crazy out there feeding on the surface. And while I like that, I want to try and use what I think is going to be the most difficult item in the bag to catch a carp on. And that is um, rubber shad things. <laughs> so You're what- You're just going to cast it over the back of them? No. So I've just been trimming bits of them off to see how slowly the rubber sinks and it's, well, that bit floats under the surface tension, but if I cut a big chunk of it off. Oh, I missed. Oh, that's sinking so slowly. It's, it's, it's really, really slowly. So I think I'm going to trim off a bit of this red tail and fish it underneath my pellet hook bait to act as a visual aid for the carp, not for myself. Not a sight bob, well a sight bob for the carp, for the carp to really home in on that hook bait. That's the plan. Good angling if it works. Fishing it really tight to the shank. That looks good. I'm liking that. Oh my God, it sits even better. It sits even better. It sits lower in the water. It's like a critically floating hook bait. That's a massive edge. A critically floating hook bait. Look at that. Look at it. Tell me that doesn't look the bollocks. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Look at it. Look at it. Well, since I caught that first carp, I've been spawning and catapulting uh, PVA bags of pellets out there. I mean, the catapult's ticked off, I could retire that now. But when the fish have been showing a little bit farther, I have been putting the odd spawn out. When fish have been closer in, I've just been catapulting PVA mesh bags of, of pellets. Yeah, hold me in. 
I don't know if it spooked off it or it, it only tried to eat the bloodworm and not the and not the pellet. Home in on that bloodworm. Maybe they don't like bloodworm. I just spooked off the bloodworm. Bloodworm power. All about the bloodworm, the bloodworm topper. I really want this one in the net because this was the most difficult one, wasn't it? This fish is really putting up a good account of itself. Oh, it is a bigger fish, I think. That just suddenly popped up out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, just suddenly up, suddenly just popped up. Get in that net, get in that net, get in that net, yes! I wasn't expecting that. It had been dogging around underneath the rod tip for ages, and suddenly it just gave up and popped to the top. It looked a bigger fish when it went in the net. I've not had a proper look at it yet. Oh yeah, it's definitely a bigger one. That's the biggest fish so far. And that's the power of the bloodworm, the bloodworm sight topper thing underneath your floaters. That's why I did it, to get a quicker bite and single out the bigger fish, and it worked a treat. That's perfect, right? Awesome. He's a proper old dinosaur, this one. Real leathery old character. Feels like a toad to hold. He's blind in one eye. Obviously his good eye homed in on that uh, bloodworm topper. And that's five items that I've now caught fish on from the blue bag. And also, that gives me lots of time going into this evening to get myself sorted I make a plan for the night ahead. So I feel like I really am ahead of schedule on this one. Happy with that. Right, need to get moved, get sorted for the night ahead. So here I am in the swim that I'm going to be fishing tonight. I'm in the middle of the lake. I've got an island at about, I don't know, 75 yard, I'm guessing, in front of me. And when I got here this morning, there was lots of fish moving around that island. And um, the fish just shown there now, actually, which is quite good to see. Um, so yeah, this morning there was lots of fish around the island. We have got high pressure, high air pressure at the moment. It's warm. Temperatures tonight aren't going to be that cold. I don't think the fish are going to drop down into that deeper water. I think they're going to be either up in the layers or in the shallow water. So I know around that island it's going to be shallow and that's where I want to have a rig. It's a bit of a tricky cast because the island kind of, it's, it's, it's not sort of facing me flat. It's kind of going diagonally away. So if, as, I'm, as I'm casting out, I'm clipping up and getting closer and closer each time. But because the, the, the island's on a diagonal, if I go slightly left of where I want it, even just by a few feet, it's on the island. If I go slightly right of where I want it, then it's in, in the deep water. It's not close enough to the island. So it's a, it's a bit of a tricky cast. Right. With the first rod clipped up to the tight hole in the bush, I set about getting a rig prepared with more items from the blue bag. 
I had decided on using one of the Nash pop-ups on a hinge rig using the ready tied shots. However, to ensure everything was a little more to my liking, the pop-ups were given a super boost with the aid of my Carp Freaks liquid and the chod rig shortened by cutting them off at the swivel and retying them. All that was left for me to do now was slam it in the bush at the first time of asking. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> That's got the equivalent of a bullseye in it, really. So for my second rod that I'm fishing tonight, I'm going to try and knock off three items from the list. And they are the four ounce inline lead, the sinking artificial corn and the size eight medium curve hooks. And this is the little setup that I've gone with. So it's not, it's not a bad rig. It's not how I would like to be fishing. So I have the size eight medium curve there and I've made a, a blowback rig there by tying a rig ring level with the barb. I have an 18 mil Odyssey Triple X uh, boily hook bait, which has been soaked in liquid liver, liquid GLM, liquid crab, and I've also added a few other nice powdered additives too. And I've just sort of shaved that off a bit to make it a little bit more pellet-like, just shaved off the sides. And I've topped that off with a piece of pink artificial corn. Um, the hook for me is, is, is smaller than I would like to be using, but the setup itself I'm pretty happy with. I mean that hook would be much better if it was a, a size 5 or something like that, a nice big hook. But what I've done, because I'm only fishing with a small hook and a big bait, the reason I'm using a big bait um, is just because of the number of bream in the lake. I mean this size hook really would be better, better suited for like a 12 mil hook bait, something like that. But I want to use a big bait, I don't want to catch bream. So instead I've just lengthened the, the, the hair. So I've got more of a separation between the, the boilie and the hook. That way it should help the hook turn and, and catch a hold. If it was really, really tight to the, to the bait like, like that, as the fish ejects the bait, there's a chance that it'll kind of be blocked by the, 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 the boilie. So it'll kind of come out backwards like that and not really catch a hold but because of the bit of a separation there it should help catch a hold better in the fish's mouth so it seems to catch well on my hand every time so that's the finished rig all i need to do now is just file down the barb because it's a barbless water then we can cast it out and keep our fingers crossed that something's going to happen tonight Perfect, that landed really shallow, felt the lead down. Yeah, that's, um, that's on that shallow little spot. Happy with that. Well, good morning. Um, last night was very uneventful, if I'm honest, nothing happened at all. And I didn't really expect to catch during the night, but I was very confident of a first light, early morning bite, and that just didn't happen. I've not really seen any signs of feeding fish whatsoever this morning. Odd fish crashing here and there, but not feeding fish, and conditions, they're not great. It already, I mean, the lake is flat calm, bright sunshine, air pressures sky high, and the best chance of catching a fish is gonna be on the surface. 
and I could probably catch one if I need to catch on the, the tub of pop-ups, I could whittle one of the pop-ups down, catch a fish on the surface. But I think right now the surface fishing would be something of a distraction because I've just looked at the item to tackle I have to catch fish on. And I can actually pass this challenge with two more fish if I play it right. By catching one on the surface on the whittle down pop-ups, I would still need to catch another two fish after that. So the surface fishing wouldn't really help me in any way. It would just become a, a massive distraction. So I need to focus all my attentions on catching carp on the methods that I'm already fishing with. But in these conditions, it's gonna be so, so tricky, so tricky. So I am gonna to have to have a major rethink on how I'm gonna approach, approach today. Because um, right now, I feel like this challenge is getting away from me. I'll catch one today, I know I will. With the lake as flat as a witch's tit and conditions just about as pants as you can imagine, I needed to try and force a bite. So I wound in and went searching for opportunities elsewhere. To be in with any chance of catching fish on the bottom in conditions like these, I felt like my best option was to target the shaded, snaggy areas of the lake where the carp may feel more comfortable in dropping down. Woodland Waters has plenty of spots like this and locating carp didn't take long at all. So this is one of the spots I baited just, just a few moments ago. And as I've walked back to this spot, I've seen fish underneath the tree. There's quite a lot of fish just in between these, these two branches here. There's probably, there's probably about eight or 10 fish. I mean, granted they are on the surface. That one just took a fly or something off the top, but there's carp in this area. I can get a bait right underneath the branches where it's nice and shady and hopefully it's shallow. I don't even know how deep it is. I'm hoping it's shallow. Then this looks like a really good chance of, of getting a fish here. Really good chance. Settling myself into position, I was praying that the water next to the branches was shallow, with two to three feet being perfect. However, upon swinging out the same hinge rig I'd used the night before, I was bitterly disappointed. Oh, it's much deeper than I was hoping it would be. That's much deeper. Where are you? Where are you? <laughs> So like about six, seven feet deep underneath that tree. And a lot of fish that are underneath them branches are right on the surface. It's, it's not ideal, if I'm honest. After sitting it out for as long as I dare without so much as a liner, it was clear the fish were not willing to drop down in that deeper water. So I up sticks to try some of the other areas I had earmarked. Well, I had a lap of the lake and I just wasn't really seeing any fish in the margins in the, in the shallow water. So I've had a walk around the lake next door and I've come to this, hmm, I'm not going to call it a back channel. That's, that's not quite the right word I'm looking for. I'm going to call it a finger hole. I've come to this overgrown finger hole and there are quite a lot of fish in shallow water beneath the branches of the trees. I flicked in a few pellets and they started feeding. So this is looking like a great opportunity. So it's exactly the same setup as I had when I was fishing under the lake. I'm just gonna try, try and gently swing it in place underneath these trees without spooking anything. Perfect. So 
So a fish has just glided over the rock hard clear spot that I'm fishing with my 15 mil pink hinge diff rig in 18 inches of, of clear water and funny enough it's spooked off it the second it saw it and it's bolted out and taken every other fish that was here with it. This really is not the right approach at all for this situation. So frustrating. I'm fishing badly. I know I'm fishing badly. I'm catching nothing. And it's not, it's not a surprise, but it's still frustrating. So there went any chance I had of any finger hole action. And to be honest, I was on the verge of being beaten by this challenge. I needed a break to gain clarity on the situation. And there isn't a better place to clear one's head and focus the mind than the on-site bar. I think given the current situation, I'm as effective here as I am by the lake. <laughs> Can't even catch one on a little lake on a big massive pink pop-up. This is probably the most the most restrictive yeah. challenge, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. When there's fish cruising around on the surface and you just know it'll be so easy to catch them off the top. And, and I'm not able to do that. Well I could, but it wouldn't. I could get one bite on a trim down pop-up. I still need two more fish. I think I'll get one tonight, this evening. That'll leave me one to catch. We've got, oh, we've got 24 hours or more, and it's getting cooler tomorrow, but still really high air pressure and no wind. But I've got a new plan for tonight. I've got better focus. I'll be all right, I think. I'm, I'm pretty confident still. After whiling away a few hours in the bar, it was time to get sorted for the night ahead, with focus now restored and confidence high. So we're going into the second and final night of this challenge. And today has been really, really tough. So tough. Um, I mean, there's still 22 hours of the challenge remaining. But if tomorrow is anything like today, then don't know where the next fish is coming from um, but I have changed things around for tonight I have switched everything over to try and get the um, medium curves and the rubber corn sinking corn ticked off the list so all I've got three rods out now unlike last night when I just had two hours I've got three rods out um, all all set up to fish with the uh, size 8 medium curves a 15 mil Pacific tuna boily just tipped off with a piece of the rubber corn all three rigs are identical I've got two rods over by the island um, not as close to the island tonight so I've come more into open water I'm fishing probably about uh, two and a half rod lengths off the island uh, and then the, the other rod is on that same shallow spot that I found yesterday. It didn't produce last night. Um, but I don't know, I'm quite confident on that spot. I haven't put any more bait in. I don't think what I put out last night got, got eaten. So I've just put a, a single hook bait back, back out on that spot. And then hopefully if I can catch a fish, then a lot changes. I'm just left with having to catch fish on the, the pop-ups the treble hook in some way and what else is it Harry? Chod rigs. Oh yeah of course the chod rig yeah and yeah I've got a bit of a plan what to do with that I'm going to make a little bit of a change uh, as to how I actually fish fish the chod rigs tomorrow but first of all I need to catch on what I'm doing right now so fingers crossed we just have to wait and see what the night brings I 
in a little bit of panic at the moment. Oh, it's, it's free. Whatever's happened, it's come off whatever it was on. But yeah, I'm playing a fish. <laughs> I was playing a fish. Now I'm still playing a fish. <sighs> what was that? Lime must have been going over a rock or a boulder or something. <laughs> oh, it's a, oh, it's weed. Okay. <laughs> right, so I'm still playing a fish. Um, I made a little bit of a change. I heard a few fish showing um, close in. To be honest, I couldn't tell if they were bream or carp. I could hear something rolling. And I literally just flicked a single hook bait uh, into the area that I, I, I thought the fish were, were showing. I just melted off. There's not really doing a lot. I think this could be a bigger fish. It's just sort of plodding around. Oh, let's do it again. There must be a lot of rocks or something. I really need this fish to go in the net so badly. Chances have been so few and far between. I'm not sure if there's going to be many more, if any more. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That, that is the one. Come on, come on, come on. Please, come on, please, come on. Get in. Yes! It's a much bigger fish. That's a 20 pounder. I mean, I know that isn't the challenge past yet, but the relief I feel right now after over 24 hours of blanking to see that go in the net, that's just given me the boost that I really, really needed. Well, this one's clearly quite an old fish, and he's uh, he's absolutely nailed. And that rig has done a pretty nice job, actually. Twenty-four five. Twenty-four five. <laughs> That'll do. That will do. So here we are, an absolute warrior of a common. 24 pound, five ounces. And this has now put me right back on track to pass this challenge. I just need one more fish. But right now, I feel like I'm gonna save for this moment for a little bit because um, that bite was such a long time in coming, over 24 hours in blanking. So to have a fish in my hands right now feels fantastic. I think old fella. So, one more fish to catch. Three components I need to use. So I now need to make a change. I've got a bit of a plan in mind on how to utilize all three, all three remaining bits of kit. I'm gonna do that change right now. So these are the three items I need to pass this challenge. I've got some pop-ups, which I have pimped, customized, boosted. I have some ready tied chod rigs and a set of treble hooks. And when I was growing up, I used to read the Mr. Crabtree books. The guy was a legend and he was a firm advocate of using treble hooks in potatoes to catch carp. So, down here, I've got a tin of parboiled potatoes. <laughs> I haven't really. I haven't really. So yeah, I'm not gonna follow in Mr. Crabtree's footsteps and use a treble hook to catch a carp. But, while I was playing that fish, the line got, I think, snagged in some weed, and a couple of times it sort of went in and pinged off and it was one point where I thought I'd lost the fish. Now, I didn't really know exactly what was down there. I heard a bit of, bit of uh, activity, flicked a single hook bait towards it 
and yeah, caught a carp. But I want to have a little bit more of an explore, build up a better understanding of what is down that area because I want to put another rod back on that same productive spot. So I'm going to use a treble hook um, as a bit of a grappling lead. So I'm going to fashion this, attach it to the lead setup, pull it back just to check if there's any weed there because I want to know exactly what I'm fishing over. So I want to check how bad the weed is, if there's any weed at all, and that will help me formulate uh, my plan and my presentation to hopefully win this challenge. I can hear someone snoring on the opposite bank. It's like 200 yards away. Oh, it's weedy. It's weedy. Oh, a little bit of light debris, light debris there. Still too weedy. That's a bit of wood. There's all sorts going on down there that I didn't know about, you see? It's weedy, choddy, and woody. A bit farther out this time. That felt a lot cleaner. So yes, with my little grappling device, it has helped me build up a better understanding of what's down there. I didn't know there was actually any weed down there at all. Now fishing in a, in a completely clean area, just probably half a rod length farther than where I was actually fishing. And because it is so clean, I, I think I really do need to be fishing a, a wafter or a bottom bait presentation instead of a pop-up. Now that fish was actually caught on a, a bottom bait tipped off with a piece of plastic horn but the item I have to catch on or one of the items I have to catch on are the uh, the pop-ups. Um, and the chod rigs. And the chod rigs, yes. Thanks Harry. So I don't really want to be fishing a chod rig and a, a pop-up over a really clean area like that. So I'm gonna to have to make some sort of modifications, I think, uh, to fish the rig as effectively and efficiently as I possibly can in this situation. With a clear spot located, I attached a bottom bait, which I tipped off with a trimmed down section of the pink pop-up to a hinge rig that I created with a ready tied chod. This created a kind of reverse combi hinge wafter mashup D rig. In theory, this would be a more subtle presentation that would be more readily picked up when presented on a hard spot. What to nothing is so tiring? I haven't had eight, we haven't had no picnic. Even though technically today should have been a good picnic. This should have, oh, this should have been prime picnic condition. It was the worst fishing conditions you could have hoped for and the best picnic conditions you could have hoped for. The best. I tried too hard to actually do some fishing and neglected the picnicking. I think if I'd have gone the other way, the fishing would have been better. Failing on two counts, fishing and picnicking. I mean, the, the picnicking started off good. I delved into my picnic hamper and pulled out three sandwiches on the first day. Three nil up before 2 p.m. I was flying, I was bagging up. I knew it was gonna go downhill when I forgot my blanket. Tartan one as well. F***ed <laughs> off. Ugh. Your light's filling, filling me up. We could have made this a Mr. Crabtree challenge. That'd be good bands, wouldn't it? Travel looks for your potatoes. I think I had a tube run into the middle of the potato that the treble hooks could fit inside the tube. It was good thinking, good rig, good mechanics. There'd be like separation between the treble hook and the potato. <laughs> Nailed them every time. He liked to strike, did Mr. Crabtree. He loved to strike. Usually every, every sort of striking caption had like a swish or a whoosh. <laughs> yeah. 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 There we go. <laughs> strike! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Told you he loved a strike. He loves a strike, doesn't he? None of this, it's already yucked. You had to set them treble hooks. <laughs> you did? I think there'll be people that will be disappointed I didn't actually catch a carp on a size 4 treble hook. <laughs> I think there will be. There will be the minority. 
Maybe next time. I don't know. I mean, it won't, obviously, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's a sacrifice I wasn't prepared to make, really. I'm just not Crabtree enough. You can't recreate Mr. Crabtree without using treble hooks and without gaffing everything. Everything. Literally. Here it is. Nice one pound roach coming to the nest. Gaff! <laughs> no need to net it, Pete. I've got the gaff. <laughs> Here he comes, Pete. He's a beauty. Get that gaff in his face. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? Well, good morning, guys. Um, nothing's happened since we caught that 24 pound common, which has come as a bit of a surprise because that bite came so quickly after I cast a single hook bait to a, a showing fish. I did think there might be a chance of just one more bite, but obviously not. Um, but I do, have, I do have time on my side. I've got all of today, but if today is anything like yesterday, then I'm gonna be up against it because there was just so few opportunities yesterday. All the fish were just cruising around on the surface. Very few chances to be had in the margins. Um, but I do have a plan. And I think with my refined hinge stiff rig approach with a bottom bait, I think that will give me a much better chance than with the, the, the blatant pop-ups. And I am gonna go back round to the lake next door. Um, there was a lot more fish in the margins there than what, what was on this lake. Have some breakfast, reel in these rods, and then go back round onto that lake for, for the final push. I don't know how I feel right now, to be honest. I feel like it should work, but then I kind of felt this yesterday as well. Um, so yeah, it, although I do have time on my side, I am starting to feel the pressure. I'm not gonna lie, I am starting to feel the pressure and I know I just need one more fish. But I think from the very beginning of this challenge, I felt probably under pressure more than, than any other for quite some time. I don't wanna let my girls down. I know they will have put a lot of thought and effort into the things that they bought me. And yeah, I feel like if I don't pass, I will be letting them down. So I can't let that happen. So before we actually start fishing and putting any bait in, I'm just gonna have a few casts around in my grappling lead arrangement just to see how clear the lake bed is, whether there's any weed or any debris down there. Oh, well, the grappling setup has done its job. It's removed a potential snag hazard from the spot I would have been fishing. Well, other than those couple of uh, branches are removed, it's pretty clean down there. Perfect for a bottom bait presentation. And that's exactly the setup I'm going to be using on my hinge stiff rig. So I'm going to put in a few handfuls of pellet in this spot. There's a few other spots I want to check out, so I'm going to repeat the exact same process on a couple other spots, put a bit of bait in, and hopefully I'll see signs of feeding activity on one of those spots through the day. Let's take one more fish. Having checked and baited a few likely looking areas, the first to show signs of feeding fish was next to a big fallen tree. I set my trap and sat back. 
at that moment, it suddenly dawned on me the severity of the situation. Fishing near the snags, I had set up the inline lead to drop off should I get a bite. But because I had to catch a fish on that lead, there was no room for error. Should I catch a bream, lose a fish or drop that lead for any other reason, it would be quite simply game over. And I seriously began to worry. After a biteless hour, I felt like I had to move. The finger hole looked fishy and was beckoning me back with its enticing bush. And on closer inspection, the carp seemed to like the bush just as much as I did. With a handful of fish now feeding on the area that I had cleared and baited, was this the opportunity that I had been hoping for for so long? Yes. Ah. We're in. Ah, it is an open water. You're playing dramatic music. I really don't know about this rig. I've never fished it with a bottom bait presentation before. I'm not sure about the hook hole. It's not something I've got a lot of confidence in. So right now my heart is absolutely racing. And I know that this is the only chance I'm going to get. If I lose it, it's game over. I can't remember last time I was more nervous about playing a fish, knowing that there isn't going to be another chance. This is it. It goes in the net or it's a fail. Simple as that. As you've seen him, he's probably the smallest carp that I saw down there. Yeah, get in the net, get in the net. Yes! That'll be a pass. <laughs> One of the smallest carp I think we ever caught on the challenge. Jesus Christ, I was lucky. I was lucky there. Jesus, look at that. <coughs> Seen it? That's like a proper top lipper. That is not a good hook hold at all. I mean, oh, look at that. <laughs> it was literally nicked through a tiny bit of skin on the top lip. That was it. Not a good hook hold. I won't be using that rig in future for fishing with bottom baits, that is for sure. And I was so, so lucky to land that fish. I think if that bite had gone on for another, another five or 10 seconds, that fish would have come off, without a doubt. <sighs> Crazy. It's a good job it wasn't that heavy. If it had been a heavier fish, a bigger fish, I think bringing it to the net, it would have just pulled. Wow. Okay, so he might not be a monster. In fact, it's one of the smallest carp I've caught on the challenge. But it is perhaps one of the most significant. Not only does this fish see me get back to winning ways, with this being the first pass in the last three challenges I've done, but it also means I haven't disappointed my girls. This challenge has been tough, without a doubt. In fact, I would say, this has perhaps been one of the most mentally challenging challenges to date. I've had to adapt to overcome. I've had to think outside the box in order to clock up this pass. And right now, I couldn't be happier. So all that's left for me to say now is challenge complete.